What's kind of the, the, the challenge for the secondary where you, know, you don't have Marlin and then you just want to open the MY is kind of six of the way to that game. What's kind of the challenge with that secondary not having two of your big players? Yeah, I mean, those are two guys who it's hard to make up for. They're two of the best in our league, and um, you don't just come across guys like that very often. But uh, I think we challenge ourselves every day, and our coaches harp on it in practice that everybody has to be ready to play. Um, they preach if you're in there, you're a starter. So um, I think guys like Gino and uh, Ronald Darby, who we brought in, Rock Yassin, Lamar Salty, because I took his spot on the podium. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's ready to play at any point. So. Yourself included, I mentioned how good the communication was, had, how much it improved since last year. Um, now seeing it in game action and seeing what you guys did on the field, how much do you feel like that was important? How much further do you guys feel like you need to go with that? Yeah, um, to your latter part, I think we can get a lot better with it, uh, myself included. I uh, feel like that was the first time the Stars got live bullets. Um, in, like, we didn't play in preseason and stuff like that. And, uh, hitting people, taking hits in the game, you get a little more tired and it's a little harder to communicate. And there's those stressful times in games where maybe we get a call late or there's a communication error and safeties have to relay it to DBs who are coming back from covering a go route and stuff like that. It's just little nuances of the game that will get um, ironed out. But I think we did a good job overall. Um, not really any busted plays or anything like that. And no balls over our head last week. So just try to do more of the same. Uh, with, with eight months of perspective, what did you take away from that last game in Cincinnati last year? Obviously, the disappointing ending, but especially on defense, you guys did a lot of good stuff. Too. Yeah, um, I mean, ending the last year, that was it was low key mid. Um, obviously, we want to win a Super Bowl every year, and a uh, pretty mid result last year. But this year, trying to make it a W, and uh, you know, we've played these guys two of our last three games. Going to be three out of the last four, so getting familiar with them, and um, you know, they're uh, they're a good team, and. We're going in there with a good game plan and just got to execute and we'll, we'll come out on top. Yeah, um, he's super disciplined in the way he plays. He he takes what um, he can get and the great ones do that. Uh, he's very good at knowing what you're in and what you're, uh, if you're not holding your looks very well, he's going to uh, dice you up. So we got to be disciplined in our looks and uh, try to make it a little cloudy for him, not make a p clear picture. Uh, but yeah, like you said, he's a great quarterback and it's a big challenge for us and they have weapons all over the field. So, uh, but like I said earlier, I think we have the guys to, to do it and contain it and uh, hopefully go out there and get a dub. Yeah, uh, playoff game was, let's say it's September, so what, eight months ago? And uh, it's obviously nothing we can do about that now. And uh, we got another opportunity, thankfully, coming up to uh, right that wrong. And I think it's more of a, for myself, be where your feet are kind of deal and uh, get better from what you messed up in the past. But there's you always have opportunity in front of you and just take advantage of it. Well, you've only been, you know, this is your second year, but did you sense maybe those Bengals games last year was a little chippier than your average NFL game you play on Sunday? Do you, do you, do you feel like there's lingering kind of rivalry, bad blood there at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, and like I was saying uh, earlier, be where your feet are, but at the same time, we've got to appreciate the past and understand the rivalry that goes into playing at Cincinnati and um, playing in the AFC North in general. Uh, all four teams are... Uh, what I would say rivals and uh, there's a pretty gritty understanding within the whole division and you got to be a certain kind of player to play on all four of these teams so uh, I think we take that mentality in every division game and uh, every other game as well but especially division games because they feel a little a little more like you got a little edge on your shoulder chip on your shoulder going into the end of there and uh, last year there are a couple of games who were that were pretty important you know the first game we played them last year was a week after the whole DeMar Hamlin thing happened and um, that was a little heavy going in there and just understanding what we're playing for and uh, sacrifices that go into it and how hard we play. And then second game, going to the playoff game, obviously big implications on that. So um, this game, game two in the season, it's hard to look down the line and see the impact of it. But this is a pretty big game for us um, early in the year. It's a good test. Kyle, I don't know how much uh, time you've got a chance to look at their week one film on offense, but it seems like it was a lot of you know, disguised coverages, changing up the picture. 
pre-snap to post-snap. Did it feel like there were certain things that they took from how you guys played Joe Burrow last year at Cleveland State? Uh, I mean, every defense varies um, person to person, team to team. Uh, I know there's also some egos involved with DC taking taking other uh, DC's plays, stuff like that, kind of believing their own stuff. But at the same time, I feel like we execute what we uh, go out there and do differently than a lot of people. And it's hard to replicate. Uh, I mean, last week, the Browns did a good job. Uh, they were physical and stuff like that. But it's not much about what the Browns do. It's not going to have an impact on Sunday. You know, they're going to be motivated to come in and um, home opener and uh, play a division rival. And they want to get a win, too. So we have to go in, play our best football, and get a win. Uh, you, you mentioned Gino as a guy who can step up, and he played a lot last year with, when Marcus was hurt. How important is chemistry on the back end, and how well do you feel you guys kind of get each other back there, you and Gino? Yeah, uh, Daryl Worley included. Uh, we all uh, played probably too much video games together, uh, a lot of Call of Duty. Um, so we go through some uh, some arguments on the game, so we can definitely handle each other out here. But I mean. In the locker room, in the lunchroom, during lunch, everything, it kind of feels like we're all brothers. Um, all come from different bra backgrounds. I'm probably 12 years younger than some guys in the locker room, but we all feel like we're kind of the same. And um, that also stems with the DB room, a bunch of different guys. But like I said, Gino, D World, everybody else in the room included, it's a kind of a one family, one unit kind of thing. One guy goes down, uh, it sucks for him, praying for him. But at the same time, it's another opportunity for another guy to prove what he can do. So I'm excited for everybody. And uh, Lamar's kicking me off the stand. So I got it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you.